It is Fan Mail Friday, and on today's show, we're going to be getting into what the Chargers' biggest needs are going into the draft, and if the Chargers are a 12-win team in 2022. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we have been covering the Chargers together for over six seasons. We started doing our own Facebook Live show, Chargers Domination Live. And now we're heading into our fifth season as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys for making us your first listen as always. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms wherever you get your podcast from. But it is Fan Mail Friday, so we are turning it over to you guys today. You guys brought some great questions, including what the Chargers' biggest needs are going into the draft or what the singular biggest need is going into the draft. And we haven't talked about that in a while since some other signings have come in in free agency. So it's a great place to start, as well as what kind of player or position could impact the Chargers the most in year one, because not any position group that you take is going to have the same impacts. We'll get into that. And if the Chargers could be a 12-win football team in 2022, which is asking a lot in a very loaded decision or division, but we will get into a kind of rapid round, a bunch of questions at the end of the show about trading up in the draft, what the Chargers draft needs are at edge at this point. Maybe George Karloftis still makes a little bit of sense. We have a lot more to get into. But David, it starts here with the best question I think of this batch to start the show with today, which is what are the Chargers' biggest needs? going into the draft, or what is the biggest need? We got it from Boltergeist on Twitter. Thank you, Boltergeist. What do each of you think is our biggest need going into the draft? C, B, O, T, O, G, or L, B? So that's tackle, guard, linebacker, cornerback. And I think this isn't, you know, which player is going to have the biggest impact, right? That'll be the next segment, what position group that is going to be. This is what the biggest need is. And I think, David, it's pretty simple to see the largest hole as we see it right now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's the right tackle position, Daniel. I mean, I don't think that you can really feel comfortable. Yeah, you have right tackles on your roster, but you can't really say with much confidence that you have a guy that can go out there and protect Justin Herbert night in and night out. So that has to be the biggest issue. Um, and we know how important tackles are. It's not There's not any real designation between left tackle and right tackle anymore. It's just You need to have a couple of very good tackles, especially in a division that you're in that's full of guys that are hungry to get after the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, a division that's loaded with pass rushers, and that's before the Chiefs may or may not get Robert Quinn, right? (laughs) Just as if this division needed another pass rusher. And when you have the Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb duo, when you have the Chandler Jones, Max Crosby duo, the tackles are going to be very important. And that is assuming that Matt Filer is going to be at left guard. If he's at right tackle, which I think might be the best option for the Chargers at this point, the way that the free agency tackle market kind of played out, I would probably rather have Matt Filer at right tackle than the options that are left out there. Still, I mean, if you wanted to bring somebody in, I would understand it. I still think there's guys that are out there that would be an upgrade over Storm Norton and Trey Pipkins. But, I mean, when you're leaving it as just Pipkins and Storm Norton, it's just hey, I know Storm Norton wasn't good enough, even if the team's still potentially high on him and wants to focus on the good he did. And Trey Pipkins, it was nice, but you haven't seen it, right? And last year was the same situation going into left tackle, and Brandon Staley, clear as day, said there was a hole there. If you switch Matt Filer to right tackle, now your biggest need is filled. But it opens up another hole, and it is a very, very thin interior offensive line position for the Chargers as well. So I think that's the next thing, though, David, is, yeah, I mean, in one scenario, it is tackle, but if you're moving him out to right tackle, Matt Filer, that being, then you have a huge hole at guard. Yeah, a massive one because, I mean, right now when you're looking at the Chargers roster, there's really only one guard that's on the team right now, and that's Brendan Hymas, and he played absolutely not at all last year. So it was kind of like a redshirt rookie year for him you know, to get some good strength, some good weight on there, and get ready to transition into the NFL game. Obviously, also transitioning from tackle to guard as well. 
that's a you know position switch. It's not always the easiest you know to be able to do at the NFL level. But besides that, you know you don't really have anyone else to play guard. So um, if you move him out, you know move Filer out to right tackle, which I agree, you know would probably be the best uh, use of his talent as uh, the way you look at the Chargers offensive line right now. Um, but you still have to get you know a couple of quality offensive linemen in there to play in, in the middle. Thankfully, you know you have Corey Lindsley at center. So I think that might, you know, take the burden off a little bit, but you need bodies regardless. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the interior offensive line, you have Brendan Hymas and Corey Lindsay. Those, those are the only two guys that are currently on the roster that you'd say probably are locks to make the roster if it ended today, right? If yeah. they were making those final cuts today. There's some, you know, futures players, right? And some probably future practice squad players. And, you know, the Chargers, I'm sure, will probably potentially trying to add to that regardless, you know, of how free agency went in the draft just because they're so thin there. And that's why someone like Zion Johnson, you know, is so tempting because it's yeah. like not only could you just, you know, start him there and be like, all right, you're good at left guard or right guard, right? And now you don't have to worry about that position at all. And you know you have four good offensive linemen, but you also have a backup center too, right? Because yeah. he was doing some nice things at the senior bowl where they were having him snap basically for the first time. And he has experience at tackle as well. So I think that's kind of why that pick, even though while not sexy, would still be filling kind of one of the Chargers' biggest needs if they decided to go that direction. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if the if the plan right now is to move Fowler out to right tackle and then zero in on taking the absolute best uh, middle interior offensive lineman on the board, and that, I mean, I mean, by all accounts, that is Zion Johnson. If that happens, I'm, I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to be mad because – you know, your greatest asset is your quarterback, Justin Herbert, and you need to maintain his health at all costs. And the Chargers for too long have neglected putting premium resources into the offensive line. And that got, you know, Phillip Rivers, not great protection for 15 plus years. He only had a couple of seasons where he had an even above average offensive line. They cannot make that same mistake with Justin Herbert. He has all the physical gifts and tools, but he needs time to be able to use those gifts and tools to the best of his ability. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the thing is, is like, I probably am willing to put my name on just, you know, Zion Johnson over Trevor Penning, right? Even though Trevor Penning is a guy who's not going to fall to 17 more than likely, and he's almost assuredly going to go before Zion Johnson does. I just have way more conviction that Zion Johnson is going to be a good player not just a starting player a good player at the nfl level and i feel like he could do it now that's the biggest difference with pending i think yeah maybe he can get there obviously athletically he's tested nicely he has the right temperament for the position but if you bring in zion johnson you get you know a top half of the league offensive guard right now and now you have four offensive line positions you feel really good about it you bring in odea bushi moving fat filer out to right tackle and now that's an offensive line i'd like to see right even though you're going to have some tempting options and potentially some tempting positions that could impact more for you in year one, like a cornerback, another shutdown cornerback, like a speed receiver who could just take the Chargers offense over the top unless Justin Herbert gets crumbled before he can even get rid of the ball because he didn't address the offensive line or a bruising running back or another talented running back to help Austin Eckler. A lot of positions that would have a different impact for the Chargers in year one. And we also have to get into whether we should think of the Chargers potentially a 12-win team, 12 wins in 2022, and we're going to get into that coming up right after this. If you guys want to bet on whether the Chargers will get to 12 wins, you probably want to hammer the over at betonline.net because right now the Chargers over-under is at 10 wins. So if you think you're going to get 12 wins, you should definitely hit that up because they're giving you a two-game spread right there. But I think that this division is so tough, and that's why with Bet Online you're seeing a lot of those numbers we're, you know, a lot of the teams in the division is really close. But if I am betting on anything, Bet Online is the number one place to go. The number one source for all betting stats and sports info. So find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting, playoffs, esports, and more. And if you guys go on betonline.net, you're going to find the best kind of prizes and tournaments that you're going to find on any betting website and they do a bunch of crypto boosts and things like that as well. If you guys are trying to get in and get in on the action because there's also big UFC fights coming up, you can even find your favorite Vegas casino games at Bet Online, where the game starts. 
All right, David, we're continuing this fan mail Friday. I should probably tell the people, hey, you can hit us up on Twitter at Lockdown LAC is where we get a lot of these, or you can call into the Lockdown Chargers voicemail line because we're trying to get every Chargers voicemail played on the show as well. And we're going to start this second segment with the voicemail, David, and a good one because they have a, a question, a brand new caller. I'll let them say what their name is to you because I absolutely love it. Let's hear what they have to say. Hey, this is Hambone from Arizona. First time caller. Love the show. I have been thinking about a few things, and one of them was these three positions and the team last year and how we fell short. Which one position do you think of the three would immediately impact our team the most? Would it be a second shutdown corner, possibly? That wide receiver you're talking about that'll just take it over the top? Or the position that I really got to thinking about was just a bowling ball running back that could get those short yardage first downs and punch it in for the score. Which one of those three do you think could truly impact the score the most for a possible win? Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Well, let me just first start by saying, like, you know, you know, for us, it's been a long journey to get to this point, you know, in our podcasting yes. careers. And it's been a lot of grinds and stuff like that. And I listened to a lot of sports radio growing up. The fact that we had a caller call in named Hambone today, one of those I made it moments for sure. Epic. I absolutely love that. Hambone, call in anytime you want. I, You know, we. I love the creative calls. I love the fun names. I love all that stuff. And it's just a good question, too, just because, like I was saying, you know, different positions could have a different impact. But, David, are we writing off running back? Because I think the one thing that we can definitively say here is that the short yardage in the goal line stuff wasn't really a problem. I mean, Austin Eckler had 20 touchdowns. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, Daniel, is, I mean, when you have a running back that scored 20 touchdowns and did it, you know, as a pass catcher and did it on the ground as a running back, I, I don't think that that's up there um, on the same playing field as those other two. Well, and I think the the good point from that is I do think a rookie running back can come in, right, and make a big impact. That's one sure. thing that's true. And, and later on in the draft. Too. Sure. Yeah, for sure. But like you've seen rookie running backs have outstanding seasons where, you Absolutely. know, right away, like most recently, Jonathan Taylor, I'd say, is yeah. one of those guys. So like we've seen that and I think we've seen that at receiver. I think we've seen less of it at corner, right? If we're talking about, you know, guys that have just come on the scene and been really good right away. Yeah, you do have the Patrick Sertans, right, from last year. And you have Trayvon Diggs, who probably took a year and then led the NFL in interceptions. Right. Then you also have the guys like Jeff Okuda. Remember him? Like, bona fide top three pick. No way he's dropping out of the top three. You haven't heard from him since. Yeah. Right? So, like, it, it doesn't always work that way with cornerbacks and wide receivers or any real position unless your name's Zion Johnson. I just You're going to be a good player at the NFL level. But, like, I do think it's a good question, David, just because, like, I think – it's probably wide receiver, but like it, it also depends because it's like I don't think a shutdown corner is going to be there at 17, right? The speed threat could legitimately be there at 17, but if it's Jameson Williams, that's not an immediate impact by any means because you might be missing time into the season or are expected to even, you know, but you're not going to get a sauce gardener, right? And you're not going to get probably even a Stingley at 17, more than likely. I mean, it would be a very big surprise. Obviously, surprises happen. So I think that kind of changes as well. Like, if you knew you could get a lockdown corner right now to add with J.C. Jackson, now Michael Davis is CB4, now Asante is in the slot, that might be it. But I think if you're talking about guys this year, I mean, it's tough because of those exact situations. Like, that receiver might not play right away unless it's like a Chris Olave or something like that. Yeah, but I mean, I think there are several speed options that 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 can add sure. to this team that can take this Chargers offense to that next dimension, and that's why I I think that it is speed receiver. I just think that that's the last missing piece to this extremely potent and very very dangerous Chargers offense. They have pretty much every single type of player that you're looking for. They have a at least as skill player. position players, yeah, at, right? Yeah, yes. Not including the offensive line. Yes, at skill positions, they have your possession receiver. They have your jump ball receiver. Uh, they have, you know, the tight ends that can do damage over the middle. They have a running back that can do anything with the ball in his hands. They have loads of weapons, but I just think they need that one last piece, and that's that true, true burner that can really stretch the field, that can really, you know, when he has the ball in his hands, he is the human joystick. He's a guy that can take it, you know, the distance from anywhere on the football field. And I know, obviously, those guys don't grow on trees. But 
if well, and those able- guys don't always come in the same package, right? I mean, you can right. have a lot of deep threats and guys like that that aren't the best yak guys too, right? So just because you're a guy that can get open deep doesn't mean you're Jamar Chase taking a slant 70 yards. No, for sure. And hey, like I said, Jamar Chase ha- had that type of impact last year, but there's no guarantee that there's one going to be here. But I think there there's is no more Jamar of a chance. Chase in this crowd. Right? No, definitely not. There's no Jamar Chases at all. But there are some guys that can bring that true speed element to the table. Um, for the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, Justin Jefferson went later on in the first round, right? Like, we've seen it happen. And f- at corner and wide receiver, like, there's a good track record of guys not working out of both positions. Right. But I do think when he's asking here, you know, what helps you win more games? It's really tough. If you had a shutdown corner, I might think that, just because if you can get those stops late in games, right? Yeah. But as the AFC has shown time and time again, some of these games are just going to turn into a track meet and a boat race, and you're just going to have to keep up. And Jamison Williams another complete receiver to add to that, to add another and finish the stone to the Chargers offense's gauntlet, right? Because that's what it is. It's adding power to power, adding yes. to a position of strength, which is always, no doubt. you know, something that's tempting because then it might take you to that next level if you can protect Justin Herbert, obviously. But we do have another good question here for segment two. A toughie, I think, David, when 12 wins is a lot. Andres Rivera from Twitter asks, with the current roster Chargers hitting over under on 12 wins. Also, I know the schedule wasn't out yet, but what games are you looking to attend? I live in Denver, so I'm looking to go to that game. So I don't know where I wanted would go. I would want to go yet. We do know the away opponents. Maybe the Niner Stadium seems like it'd be kind of cool. I mean, even the Chiefs Stadium seems kind of cool. But you can't just sneak in the 12 wins there. That's a big number, Andreas. And like I said, on Bet Online, the number is 10. And that seems about right. To me, It, I think that the over-under should be 10 and a half to 11. That, that's kind of like where my sights are right now. Obviously, David, knowing that it's way, way too early, 12 and 5 with everything going on, that's a really tough call. Yeah, I, I think that's hard, hard to say right now just because everyone in the division, you know, save for probably the Chiefs, as, at least as of right now, have gotten better. They are a better version of themselves. And so there's going to be more cannibalization. There's going to be some really, really tough games that you're going to have to go up against. And, you know, the other opponents that you're going to have to face, too. You have to face the NFC uh, and NFC West this year. And, I mean, that's probably one of the more difficult divisions in football that we're going to have to go up against. At least the Chargers are going to have to go up against. So just considering the opponents and also, you know, the big question marks on the offensive line, you just don't know the answers to right now. I can't confidently say that they're going to go 12 and 5. I think a sweet spot there for me is 11. I think So you're going under. Yeah, I'm going to go under for right now. Yeah. I'll go under too. I mean, I think 11 wins gets you into the playoffs. More than likely the AFC is loaded. Yeah. And I think there's there's pluses and minuses, you know, pros and cons to the Chargers schedule this year. First of all, you're playing the NFC West instead of the NFC East. So last year, you got to beat up on the Eagles. You got to beat up on the Giants. You got to beat up on the Washington football team, now Commanders. This year, you get the NFC West, and you have at least three out of four really good teams, probably, with the Niners, the Cardinals, and the Rams. But you also get the AFC South, which is unquestionably, me and David debated it in the beginning of the show. I mean, that's the worst division, easily. I mean, you can argue there's at least three good teams, good-ish teams, at least, and the three other divisions outside of the AFC South and the Colts and the Titans could be good, but you still have yeah. the Jaguars. You still have the Texans. Easy for us to say is the team that lost to the Texans last season and David had to go watch <sighs> in person. And that's probably not the game David would most like to travel to, but they are playing again, so he's going to have to go back for round two to see if they can change their fate that, you know, this time around. But I think we probably both go under, but not by much. But it is a huge testament, David, of just how much – Vegas, you know, and these betting websites believe that this division is going to cannibalize itself. And and that's going to be the tough thing is just all the talent that you've added into your division. But we do have more fan mail Friday questions to get into, including our rapid round. So we're going to talk about next why the edge rushing position has gotten less love since the free agency has started and at 17 for the Chargers. We're also going to get into favorite pizza topping, favorite type of burrito. If the Chargers could try to trade up for Derek Stingley and also if we could hear nothing about who the Chargers take in round one before they actually take him. But the one thing I do need to tell you about is my favorite protein bar. And of course, I'm talking about Built Bars. And right now, guys, I've always told you my favorite flavor of Built Bar is peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream. They're both right up there, right? But what if I was to tell you they have just a straight up peanut butter flavor of Built Bar now? 
And I don't know about you guys, but like I literally will sleepwalk and go into the kitchen and like just eat like peanut butter sandwiches in the middle of the night. And like the peanut butter on my light switches can attest to that. So excited for this new peanut butter flavor built bar. But you guys can also get it on the chirp flavored be- uh, built bar right now with Easter right around the corner. I'll let you guys go figure what that one is in raspberry cheesecake. Another really good one to go with cherry bar, see a mint brownie. But the other great thing about built bar is it tastes like a candy bar. I just read you all those candy bar flavors. But it has, you know, all the nutritional value that's going to fit onto your diet because most bars have less than four grams of sugar, less than four grams of carbs. And they also usually have about 130 calories and 17 grams of protein. They are protein packed. They're 100 percent covered in chocolate. They're soft and easy to chew. Get a protein bar that tastes better. It'll change things up. I've really enjoyed my fair share of Built Bars since I've been dieting for the wedding. It's actually going pretty good. And Built Bars has been a big part of that because when you're eating the other things I have to eat. You need something fun. That's what Built Bar brings. And you can even save some money because if you go to Built.com, you can use the promo code LOCKED15 to save 15% off your order at Built.com. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, David. Well, now it's time to get into a lot more questions that we have to try to go rapid round here. And we're going to start with a voicemail here that we had a caller, Bob from Jersey, recurring caller who is asking, why aren't we talking about George Karloftis anymore? Hey guys, what's going on? Bob from New Jersey. In terms of the draft, about a month or so ago, I heard a lot of talk about George Karloftis at 17 for the Chargers and not hearing his name mentioned anymore, but he still seems to be mocked in that 15 to 25 range by most guys. So just wondering if there was some news that came out that, you know, is preventing the Chargers from drafting him or, or looking at him or if he just had some, some bad film or something like that. So. Just curious on your thoughts there. I, clearly, they need an, a third edge rusher, um, so I, that's obviously a need. So, just wondering what your thoughts were there. Thanks. See you. Thank you, Bob. I, David, it looked like you kind of had a light bulb moment or something during that middle of that video. You guys couldn't see him, but I could see him. What were you thinking when he was saying that? Well, I mean, he just said that you know, was there some news that came out that kind of turned you off from George Karloftis? And it's not necessarily a turning it off to George Karloftis in particular as it was just the entire edge position or, you know, the pass rusher position because of obviously a Khalil Mack trade. I mean, that's the thing is that was about a month ago. Why it changed about a month ago is probably because the, you know, it's almost exactly a month since they had traded for Khalil Mack. Right. Yeah. I think that's a a big part of it for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, I think beforehand, before we knew that, you know, they were bringing in a former defensive player of the year, uh, then, yeah, it was definitely a big position that I think garnered some consideration at 17. I mean, that was, hey, who was going to be the next dance partner for Joey Bosa? Now, you know, the Chargers answered that emphatically. So I think that really lessens the importance of at least getting an edge rusher so early on in the draft. I still think it's something that I'd like them to add to, but I don't think it's at 17 anymore. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think realistically it should be on the table. And George Karloftis is a really nice player at the beginning. If You know, there's certain guys that seem to kind of get too much hate as other guys kind of start to move up draft boards as people actually start watching the film. That's why, you know, at the beginning of this, we thought we we're the Chargers were going to get like Jermaine Johnson and like some other guys who are clearly going to be gone now just because the rest of the league caught up. And the guys like George Karloftis, I think, are the guys that kind of slid down because of the love for, you know, the David Ajabo's pre-injury and just some of the other guys that we've seen really, really skyrocket during this, you know, pre-draft process. And the other thing is, too, is like even when we're talking about this, right? Like if you take a corner at 17, you play three corners 80% of the snaps. Like yeah. that dude is going to come in and, and, and be a starter for you, right? He probably takes Michael Davis's position. If you're talking about wide receiver, a ton of three wide receiver sets. Like that player can have a big role. There's not often where you're getting three edge rushers on the field. It can happen. You can have packages and things like that. But as far as an immediate return on your investment, it's going to be hard to get that out of a first round edge rusher, even though the best player available to you at that spot might be an edge rusher. I do think a lot of them are going to go before the Chargers get to pick. And they've been, you know, Jermaine Johnson, Kevin Thibodeau, Aiden Hutchinson. I mean, there's so many guys that probably will go. I like George Karloftis as a prospect. I think it's just harder for anyone to see what his role would be year one, even though I do think that me and David would both agree that like there is a hole right now at edge three. And that's something that still has to be addressed at some point, but we have to go wrap it around now, David, because we are trying to get into as many questions as possible. So 
See how fast we can do this Let's get starting it. now. Super fan Zach, because LT mentioned that he never talked to the Chargers before drafting because Bosa was a big surprise. Do you think there's a possibility we could draft a player in the first round that we haven't talked about or that we have barely talked about? So, yes, there could be. And, and, and we've talked about a lot. I'd be surprised at this point if there was a player they took in the first round that we haven't talked about. But I think there's also, David, a fair amount of players that we have talked about that we haven't seen any true connections with with the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, we know the Chargers like to keep things very close to the vest, they like to keep things quiet. Um, so, yeah, I mean, is there a chance that somebody could be there? And, hey, obviously, I've said many times, and I'll say it again, the draft is the ultimate crapshoot. You have no idea what's going to happen. We have a, an idea of what might happen, but when draft night comes, there's all, almost a positive, 100% positive chance that something is going to happen that we did not expect. And I think it's a little bit different when you're picking where the chargers are, just because it's like, there's only so much conviction the chargers can have at who right. is going to be available to them when that pick comes up. Right. Like, so yeah. I just think that like when it was Joey Bosa as the third overall pick, there was only a few different options. They would conceivably go with. It might've yeah. been Jalen Ramsey. It might've been Ronnie Stanley. It might've been, you know, not Ezekiel Elliott, but you get the point there. I mean, I think that's the bigger thing. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if, the, you know, the guy goes up there, grabs his number one jersey on it, walks to the press podium afterwards. Like, I, I had no idea the Chargers are going to take me. We've seen it happen before. Wouldn't surprise me if we saw it happen again. It's rapid round, Dan. Come on. All right. Going to DJ Stack next. Every great defense has a nickname. If this defense ends up being on that level, what name should we give it? So, I was racking my brain before the show. I think I've come up with a couple of good ones. David has agreed, and I could sound like an idiot right now. So, first one. And the, the first of all, David, the main thing is the defense has to be great. Oh, yeah. Jack boys, it went away too quick. Like it, They were calling yeah. themselves Jack Boys way after they were the Jack Boys. You got to earn it, and you got to keep it. Yeah. You, you have to earn it first and then keep going to keep it, right? Yes. The League of Lightning. All right, that's that's one. I'm there with that. I like it. That that's a good one. I was also, I mean, because like Legion of Lightning also sounds very cool, but there's also it you does. know the Legion of Boom and, and things like that. The right. League of Lightning for the Chargers defense, if it's good, only if it's good to great. Yeah. The other one, right? Storm Patrol. Yeah. You like I that like, one? I like that one. I do. I do. And I, I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't at least throw mine in there, which I, I put out, I put out there, but it's not the best. It's just the electric fence. I, I mean, I right. just, I, I think it fits. Um, you know, if you think about it, it makes concept, sense logically, it just yeah. doesn't sound good. It's not sexy. Yeah. I, right. I, and that's why it, it's catchy. still a work in progress. Yeah. It, it has to be catchy. That's the tough thing, right? That yeah. That's what makes it a little bit tough. Yeah. The Lightning League. I mean, there's there's a few different ones. I mean, there's I something like that you can do there. The League of Lightning. I don't know. I think those are those are our best guesses, though. We racked our brains. I, I know you may like them. You may hate them. You might put it on a T-shirt and copyright it because I just give, give us your names. Idea. I mean, I want to hear your names. I want to see Chargers your face defense. before you steal my idea for the Chargers defensive name. I'm looking at you. You know who you are. <laughs> All right, let's get this bag ready here. It's supposed to be lightning round, David. Stop taking so long. Since the Chargers expect to be competing team is trading up an option at 17. Next year's first, if the Chargers are a good team, would be likely in the 20s anyways. And Staley sure did pay attention to Stingley. So that is one of the weirdest things of this draft process is like Brandon Staley going to nothing and then like the whole cavalry going to Derek Stingley's pro day, right? Just not something I saw coming or, you know, is it a giant smoke screen, whatever. Yeah, I mean, Tom Tuesco has traded up. I mean, I think it's more yeah. likely that they trade up than they trade down. Yeah, definitely. I think that you have but to. But next year's first, David. First of all, wait, wait. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, I don't, there's almost nothing I'm trading next year's first for. Not with how good Tom Tuesco has been with the first round picks. And I don't know if that kind of player is going to be that guy to move up for. Yeah, no, I mean, that I think we can take out of the equation right now. I, I don't think that there's any way that they're going to trade next year's first. Could they trade up? Yeah, for sure. We've seen Tom do that several times. Um, like you said, I mean, I would be you know interested to see if they would trade back in any scenario. I think that would be something that would be a lot more uh, uncommon than trading up. When you talked about it before, too, you know, Luke Braun from Locked On Vikings and also Locked On NFL, which you can help you keep up with the rest of the league every day of the week. He talked about potential, you know, Chargers moving up to 12. 
that's something I think is more feasible. And I think it's also something that wouldn't cost you your 2023 first round pick. So that, yeah. you know, th- I think that's probably the most likely outcome. But we have one more here. Tom T's burner. We've heard waffles versus pancakes. We had burgers versus tacos. Tom T's burner, I feel like, has always come with these food questions. Always good food questions. What is your favorite pizza topping? What is your favorite type of burrito? David, go first. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think my favorite pizza topping of all time is pepperoni. I mean, it's just the original. So boring. It's the original goat. But um, if I if I want to, you know, piss some people off, uh, well, no, I'm just gonna be myself. Chicken. I, I love chicken on pretty much anything, and so chicken on pizza is fantastic, especially if they got a chicken Alfredo pizza. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ah, Barbecue very chicken good. pizza, right? Like, I, mm-hmm. I think chicken's a very underrated topping on it pizza. Is. If you really wanted to upset people, like you'd say like pineapple, number one favorite. I do love pineapple. I don't care what people say. Pine- yeah, pineapple ham and pineapple pizza? is good. Yeah, I'm definitely 100%. Canadian yes. bacon and pineapple? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm Canadian in. bacon also, I think, an underrated pizza topping. It's hard to pick one pizza topping because like if you were going to say like meat lovers, if that's like a topping, I'll go meat lovers, you know, oh, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Chicken, bacon, ranch, pizza, yes. you know, barbecue, chicken, pizza. Alfredo white sauce pizza. Like, Love it. Yes. I mean, pepperoni. I'd probably got pepperoni too. That's boring. David, is there any, why is the best burrito a California burrito? Uh, yes or no? Yeah, no, it's not for me. I mean, I, I have tremendous respect for the California burrito, but the wow. OG will always be a breakfast burrito. And specifically from El Azteca, I am a huge breakfast burrito fan. It's Eggs, I don't think breakfast ham, burritos were included. Cheese and French fries all up in that beautiful tortilla. It doesn't get much better than that. The breakfast burrito is undefeated. Definitely my favorite. I wasn't even thinking of breakfast burritos. I ah, love breakfast burritos. Gotcha. I know. Like a, a good chorizo breakfast burrito. I oh, mean, uh, yes. A bacon breakfast burrito. I'd still go California just because it's like California. You can only get it like in California. It's such a California thing. Like I feel like you could pretty much do a breakfast burrito anywhere because you have the bacon, you have sausage, things like that. I mean, if you don't live in, you know, San Diego or SoCal or Los Angeles, whatever, you might have a different feeling towards breakfast burritos. Breakfast burritos are delicious. And I don't often eat breakfast, but I take it over pancakes and waffles any day of the week. And I, why is pepperoni the number one topping, right? Like it just, it's so boring, but like, if you could only have one thing on a pizza, like it's probably going to be pepperoni, yeah. you know, because you get the cheese already. Obviously, that's a given, right? You go yeah. pepperoni, you can have pepperoni on any kind of pizza. But like I also wouldn't get just a pepperoni pizza if I had a choice. Oh, no, definitely not. I mean, I like bacon as an accent, too. I, I think like you can pretty much too. put bacon on any type of pizza and yeah. it's still going to be good. So, yeah, I mean, if you have meat lovers, it's going to have bacon on. Obviously, I would go meat lovers. Look at me. You know, like that's just I'm going meat, all meat, everything like that's just a, the best way to do it. So no, no offense to our vegans out there. No, I mean, get it like an impossible patty on the thing. I don't care, dude. Like just, y- you need something on there, you know, that's going to be meaty, meatish at the very, very least. But that is going to wrap things up for today's show. Thanks for hanging around and getting into the nonsense later on in the show with us. We appreciate you guys and make sure you never miss the show. Subscribe to the lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms, wherever you get your podcast from. If you want to leave us a review, on Apple Podcasts, you know, when you follow us there, we would appreciate and love you forever if you like the show. And if you guys want to get involved in the next Fan Mail Friday show, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Lockdown LAC. So you see when we put the post or you can see my post at Dan Talk Sports on Twitter and David Drogmeyer's at Drotalk SD. You can also hit us up in the YouTube comments. You can also hit us up on Instagram at Lockdown Chargers or our Lockdown Chargers Facebook page. We post the show to all of those places as well. Or call into the Lockdown Chargers voicemail line at 323 323- 524 But this part is important. Next week, it's draft time. And next week, every show will be devoted to the draft. I don't know if we're going to do a traditional mock draft Monday on Monday. But next week, we're going to get into our favorite players at every position at all different points of the draft and give you guys a full week of draft primers and which prospects we want to see on the Chargers. So make sure you guys are back here with us for that. Until then, take it easy and go Bolts.